Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This episode is a watch review on the new Phoebus Kraken. Now then, we spoke and they listened. That's all I'm going to say. Recently, I reviewed the uh, Eagle Ray from Phoebus, a watch that was uh, sort of a compressor diver looking. I'll put a picture of it now. I was really, really impressed with this watch, actually. It really suited my uh, tastes. I do like the retro look, the, the colours and everything else. Uh, but there were some complaints or niggles I thought that they could improve and you guys also answered those in the comments below and Phoebus read the comments. Now I'm not saying it's just my review because obviously lots of other people reviewed that watch as well but this is a brand that is listening to you guys and is changing what they're doing based on what we're saying. I have not seen this watch in the flesh yet, it arrived today, I've got it still in the packet, I haven't opened it up, I've seen a render of it and I know what they've improved. So let's cut to the bench and let's have a closer look at this watch. So we'll start with the packaging. This is looking like a travel case, uh, identical to the Stratton watches that I've bought. I've bought two Stratton watches and they come in something equally the same as this. So it's great because it's dual purpose. It's not just a box that sits in your cupboard. It's something you can actually use. The uh, watch is a Kraken and the logo for Phoebus is arguably either a Kraken or a Octopus, whichever one you prefer. Now I am dying to see this watch. Like I say, I've only seen the render. So let's dive straight in. Okay, we've got the instruction books. We'll talk about those later. Oh, here we go. Yes. So that actually feels quite weighty. It's the strap that really got me. Look at this. This is reminiscent of many sort of 70s straps for me. Looks very nice indeed. Case finishing is looking pretty sweet. Uh, that dial is nice. Uh, it is a 300 meter um, dive watch. Now it had comes in different colors um, and I couldn't choose to be honest with you. So I asked my nine year old daughter and this is the one she chose. I'll put the pictures up now with the other ones. Uh, if you think this is the best one and she's picked the right one, uh, let me know in the comments below. So initial, I think this is lovely actually, but it's covered from head to toe in plastic. So we need to take the plastic off, size it from a wrist. I can compare it to the other, the other uh, Phoebus that I've got, tell, about, tell you about the changes, and then we'll do some much better shots out in the daylight. So here we are out in the daylight, which I think is the best place to showcase any watch because the daylight is not going to hide anything, is it? Uh, so before I get into particular detail, let's just go through the specs of the watch. So this Phoebus is powered by the Miyota 9015. That is a high beat movement and it's vibrating at 28,800 beats per hour, which equates to eight beats a second. And as a result of all of that, of course, it's going to give you a much smoother tick. We'll see the results of the movement as well on the Timographer later. Um, this movement also offers you a 42 hour power reserve. OK, so the case diameter is 41 millimetres. The lug to lug is 50 millimetres. It's on the limit, but as you'll see later, it fits the wrist really, really nicely. The case thickness is 11.3 millimetres. And that's on account that the Myota 9015 is only 3.9 millimetres thick. And as a result, that means that watch cases can be thinner. And I see that as a good thing because some of the watches I've seen, uh, certainly uh, from micro brands, can be almost 15 millimetres nowadays. And that is insane on thickness. Uh, the lug width on this is 22 millimetres. And it's this particular bracelet is going to taper down to 20 millimetres. Uh, the watch reports to have a double dome sapphire crystal that has three layers of anti-reflective coating. I don't doubt the anti-reflective coating, but I do doubt the double dome sapphire. Again, I'll show you that on the bench later on in the review. Uh, if it is a dome sapphire, it's very, very, very subtle. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, the watch has a screw down crown uh, that's offering a 300 meter water resistance. And lastly, Phoebus offer a two year guarantee on all of their automatic movements. And they also offer free shipping and return and full refund up until 30 days after delivery. So it gives you that no quibble guarantee that if you don't like the watch for any reason, you can send it back at their expense. No problems at all. So that's a fair deal in my book. 
Okay, so that's the specs out of the way, so let's talk about it in a bit more detail. Firstly, the dial. So the dial has got a circular finish to it. It's in matte black, and that circular finish also carries on onto the bezel, uh, which obviously complements the dial. I really do like that design feature, actually. I think it's quite nice. Of course, at 12 o'clock, we have the Phoebus Loco, which is printed on. It's an octopus or it's a Kraken. I'll let you decide. But either way, I'm a particular fan. And believe me, you've got to be a fan of the uh, logo because you're going to see it quite a lot on this watch. The uh, Minute Track is marked in gold, as you can see there, and the indices are applied. It has a two-tone uh, loom on the indices and also the hands. Uh, I was never very good at geometry, though, guys, so I don't know the proper name for the indices shape. If you do, then leave it in the comments below. I'd uh, welcome that little bit of information for certain. Um, I'll put a loom shot up now as well because the loom is really, really impressive on this one as it was on the last one, to be honest with you. And I'll read a little bit about the loom from their own website. So it has 15 layers of Super Luminova, uh, BGW9 and C3 on the hands and indices. So there's the two different ones that you can see in some of the photographs. And it's got C3 at the loom pip at the 12 hour on the bezel. So lastly, on the dial, of course, there's that, that date wheel. And it's really nice to see that the date wheel uh, colour matches the actual dial. Uh, from what I can tell, that's quite rare in a micro brand because they use off-the-shelf movements. And often, like the NH35s, uh, have only got a white uh, date wheel or perhaps even a black date wheel. This is a common thing that I've seen on other reviews of people saying they wish they could change the colour. Uh, and Phoebus have done that because every dial colorway you have on this one whether it's the green the blue or the champagne etc you are going to get the uh, date wheel the same color as the dial and that is a really really cool feature i have to say there's also a twist to the date wheel but again i'll talk about that later when we get back onto the bench so onto the case and the case finishing is really good it's got uh, vertical brushing on the sides uh, which has been executed really, really well, in my opinion. Very, very precise. I'll show you some better shots of the bench later on. It does look very, very good. Each surface as well is brushed. So the uh, bezel is brushed, the uh, crown guard's brushed, and so are the lugs. It's not a polished surface at all on this watch. I think it just adds to that kind of uh, rugged look that they're going for, to be honest with you. Uh, the crown is a screw-down crown, of course. It's got good grip, and it has the embossed Phoebus logo on the end of the crown as well. Now, one of the many standout features on the watch is the lugs. Just look at them. I absolutely love them. They look like claws. Perhaps they're influence of a Kraken. Maybe it's the Kraken's beak, perhaps. I don't know. But I do like this detail. It's different, it's interesting, and it does look fantastic. So that leads me on to the bracelet because I think it speaks for itself, really. It kind of looks like a 70s coffin link, but just not quite there. I like to think that the inner links on this one perhaps look like tentacle suckers and that's again getting that Kraken feeling coming from it. The links are all solid stainless steel and it has screwed links for sizing. My only criticism actually would be that uh, they don't provide a screwdriver for it and I think perhaps they should because sizing these things, okay, it's all right for me, I've got plenty of screwdrivers, but for the average guy, he probably hasn't got a small screwdriver to fit that and using the wrong one can cause damage. You could slip, you could scratch the bracelet or perhaps even hurt yourself, which is not exactly ideal, is it? So Phoebus uh, perhaps uh, put a screwdriver uh, in with the package as a goodwill gesture. Uh, I'll cover the clasp a little bit later on because there's some quite interesting developments there. So the final part to show is the case back. And I love a good case back, I have to say. And this one probably tops them all in my collection. Uh, the last Phoebus I thought was pretty epic. And many of you guys did as well. I'll put a, 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 a shot up now just in case you didn't see it. Uh, but let's take a look at this one just to feast your eyes on this. I'm not sure how they do it but it's full of detail. It's very deeply cut into the case back, which shows off the detail a bit more. We have a Kraken attacking a ship under a moon and stars. Weirdly though, I can see a face in that Kraken's body. I don't think it's intentional, but once you see it, you can't seem to unsee it. So I'm not gonna tell you where it is. Uh, if you can see it, put it in the comments below. But either way, I think it's very, very uh, characterful. It's very well executed. Again, it's a shot blast finished. It just looks really, really nice. Uh, 10 out of 10 on the case back Phoebus. So there we go. 
Uh, that's the overview of the watch out in the daylight. So let's cut back to the bench uh, and compare it to the Eagle Ray, put it on the timographer and sum the video up. Right, we're back on the bench and let's test this movement on the timograph. So let's get it going. And of course, we're gonna get that really, really fast sound of the beat because it's a high beat movement. So I will just mute the speaker for now. And this is our first trace coming through. And that's in obviously the dial up position as we can see. Uh, it's pretty nice, isn't it? We've got good amplitude, beat error is absolutely spot on, and it's plus 10 seconds. So let's just stress test it a little bit. Let's put it into uh, crown up. And again, that rate is nice and constant. Uh, like I said in my time grapher video, the one before this, um, I should leave these running for a bit longer, but we're just doing a quick test for this video. So again, turn it up. And that's also uh, still keeping pretty constant. The amplitude dropped a little bit, but I'd expect that. Uh, but the rate is still okay at plus 14 seconds. So I may as well check all of the positions. And I'm not really seeing much deviation at all. So it's typical. This is the second Myota 9015 I've had on the channel. And I was quite impressed with the first one as well. And that's your dial down position. So there we go. Uh, really good, accurate movement, high beat, uh, brilliant. So let's compare it to their previous model. All right, so here are the two models side by side. Now, I know we can't really compare them like for like because they're completely different designs. And again, that's what I seem to be liking about Phoebus. It's like automotive. Uh, I don't like the fact that all BMWs seem to have the same front that Mercedes do. I know it identifies a brand, but I like difference. And that is completely different to that. And that really sits well with my brain. Uh, let me just quickly show you the case finishes because, of course, the outdoor shots I couldn't show you really. So this linear brushing on the sides is very, very precise. We've got some lovely edges, different angles with different finishes on, sweeping down to those lovely lugs. The brushing goes in different directions, directions on every face. Gives it a lovely feel to me. So uh, obviously I said that uh, we spoke and they listened. The first one is a bit tenuous, really. It's to do with the hands. I thought the hands on this one weren't the best. Perhaps it could have had sword hands. Uh, certainly the minute hand here, it, I thought was a bit too long. So here we are with their next creation and it's got sword hands on. That might be just a coincidence and it probably is, but equally it's something I commented on and you guys also did as well. So there we go. Now I said that the uh, date wheel had a gimmick and I will show you. So as you can see at the moment, it's red, and then it goes to gold, and then it goes to red, and then it goes to gold. So every other day, alternate colours. And that's, it's interesting, it's a bit quirky. I mean, the colours go with the dial, of course, so the red picks up the triangle here, and of course, where it says automatic. But to me, I always think if I see a date in red, it also means that it's a Sunday. Uh, so every other day is a Sunday. That'd be great because that means the day before would be Saturday. So we've only got Sundays and Saturdays. So no work. <laughs> Fantastic. So, OK, on to the uh, next part, which is the bracelet. So, again, we looked at this and my comments on this one were that I thought it was a bit sort of Omega looking. And as much as it is really comfortable and generally is, I've daily this watch for days on end. Um, the links, they looked like there were five link um, links. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean? Uh, but they weren't, they're sort of all stuck together. So it gives you that illusion. The new bracelet, they are all individual links. So that's just a step up again in manufacturing and quality. And as a result, that gives you again, much better uh, feeling when it's on the wrist, it fits much better. 
but it's just quality to me. I think that's attention to detail. They've listened to what we've said on there and they've done it on this. So the last one really is the clasp. The clasp, I think we all had a gripe on the clasp. Kind of like an afterthought, just sticking that Phoebus there. Uh, it's it really detracted from it. Now, okay, the clasp you don't see very often, of course. It's not the end of the world and potentially you could have got away with it just being plain on here. But uh, I thought it was quite quite boring and un underwhelming, really. So on the new one, what have they done? Here we go. So they put the octopus on it, which I agree. I think that looks great. Phoebus there as well. Fantastic. And we've also got a glide lock. So obviously, if you want to wear a wetsuit, not that I ever would, you have that function there, which is fantastic. And then we've got a nice full milled uh, clasp as well, which fits nice. You've got three micro adjustments. And because some of the links are quite small, you actually do get it to fit quite well, quite easy. So definitely a big thumbs up on that clasp. I think that is a massive improvement. And Phoebus, you should keep with that design from this day forward. Okay, so let's sum this watch up. Personally, I think it's absolutely fabulous. I like all the design cues on this one. Certainly like the fancy lugs that they've put on it. That bracelet, of course, is uh, very, very good too. Uh, the whole dial layout is very, very nice. The uh, bezel, by the way, it's nice. It's nice and smooth. There's a little bit of play, but nothing special. I've certainly seen a lot worse on some of the watches I've seen recently. The double dome sapphire that I was referring to. Can you see a dome sapphire? To me, if there might be a slight dome, but mm, not too sure on that one. So perhaps that's just something in their blurb that they've written wrong. I don't know. I'll question them later on that one. Uh, so if I was to nitpick, then perhaps the uh, crown is a little bit tight on its threads. Uh, I'll put some grease on it and see if that uh, cures that problem. But really, that's all I can find from a negative point of view. You know, that case back as well, that's incredible. So there's been a lot of design work put into this, a lot of effort in execution. The manufacturing's definitely stepped up a notch from the last model. And of course, that is going to reflect in the price because this will go on the market for 460 US dollars, which is around 350 pounds. And that's a big chunk of money uh, for a micro brand, in my opinion. But this one seems to be going upwards. Like I say, it's a step up in quality from the last one. Uh, and you've got arguably a much better movement than certainly the uh, Seiko NH35. And it's kind of priced in the pressage uh, area. So possibly a better movement than even what's in the Seiko pressages now as well, to be honest with you. So yes, uh, if you want something a little bit different, you want to buy into a micro brand, then this certainly has got to be worth considering. I know Phoebus, Phoebus have got a great big fan base and why not? They seem to be going from strength to strength and I will certainly support what they're doing because I do like it. Um, so there we go, guys. That is the review. Uh, you've seen everything warts and all on this watch and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then of course, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments below. Of course, I'm going to read every single one of them. I'll try to reply to as many as you can. I'd like to hear your feedback, whether you like it, whether you don't. Of course, Phoebus are going to like to hear your feedback, good or bad as well. So uh, hit the comments, hit the like. If you like the video and you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing. Uh, more reviews on the way and, of course, a lot more restorations on the way as well. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye for now.